I want to take a moment to express my gratitude to each and every one of you amazing supporters. This channel has evolved into an incredible community of story lovers, and I couldn't have achieved it without all of you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider joining this journey and helping us reach new heights. Thank you. I never anticipated stumbling into the depths of depravity when I downloaded that janky browser to access the dark web. My curiosity led me to explore the mystery surrounding it, thinking I could handle it. Oh, how wrong I was. I nonchalantly clicked past warnings on the download screen, eager to unlock this infamous hidden part of the internet. The browser booted up quickly, and soon, I found myself staring at a barebone search page, devoid of the familiar logos and graphics I was used to. Feeling intrepid, I tentatively typed in a few surface-level keywords like drugs, suspicious sites, and other things that might lead me to intriguing places. I got some odd results about contraband materials for sale and decided to dig deeper. Soon, I landed on what looked like old-school bulletin boards with post after post of seemingly banal threads on mundane topics. Interspersed here and there were something vulgar or quasi-shady. I figured that was par for the dark web course. However, one thread title gave me pause. It simply read, The Basement Hangout for Restrictive Hobbyists. Restrictive Hobbyists? What did that even mean? Morbid curiosity got the best of me. The forum thread loaded slowly, the layout much clunkier than I was used to. As I scanned the first few posts, a chill went down my spine. People were casually discussing simulated kidnappings, how to restrain victims safely, or ways to hide. Them securely role-playing violent scenarios Many usernames stood out. Random Abductor, Duct Tape Master, and Scared Inquid among them. My finger hovered over the browser's back button as instant regret set in. But something kept me transfixed. The more posts I read on that thread, the deeper the pit in my stomach became. Details too real to ignore began to emerge. The longer I lurked, Users referenced wanting tips to take dark fantasies to the next level in real life. Others outright asked for hands-on mentorship from more experienced kidnappers, wanting to see the fear in their victims' eyes for real. Incredibly, some seemed open to providing such guidance. My mouth went dry, reading one lengthy post from a user named Vengeance. 1138, describing the desire to act out elaborate kidnapping plots to get revenge on old high school bullies and family members. The vicious scenarios sounded sickeningly real, with responses encouraging the revenge plan and asking for updates when targets were captured. Jesus, please let this just be some twisted roleplay message board for bored sociopaths. I thought, but my gut said otherwise. The back and forth specifics on weapons, transport vehicles, soundproofing basement chambers, and the like were undeniably thorough. These psychopaths knew too much. Fear crept up my spine. Did law enforcement even know sites like this existed in the stealth corners of the web? Heart pounding now, I couldn't look away. The next post featured grainy photos sent privately to Vengeance 1138 from another user. They showed a terrified young woman bound to a radiator in an undisclosed location. Panic molested her face as she strained frantically against restraints. Oh God, this looked legit. I immediately flagged the post, shoving the entire sinister thread away and uncovered, hoping the site admins would do something. Though, as I went to close the browser, 
my eyes caught a newly posted video link titled Muffled Success. Hand shaking almost too hard to control a mouse, I clicked. Footage of a crying woman with long red hair appeared briefly before I hastily closed the browser. The window of bile rose in my throat. That was a real victim, and I suddenly recognized her from missing person flyers posted around town recently. Oh no, this is bad. Slamming the laptop shut did nothing to erase the disturbing images now seared into my brain, with hands still shaking from a toxic mix of fear and rage. I grabbed my phone to call the only people who might, hopefully, put a stop to what I unintentionally uncovered. 911, what's your emergency? A dispatcher answered calmly. I took a gulping breath trying to steady my voice enough to form coherent words. I, I found this website on the dark web. People in there are talking about kidnapping and hurting people for real, I explained. I closed my eyes, feeling insane. She would definitely think this was some kind of prank call. However, the dispatcher surprised me by asking for the site name and any usernames I could recall. I hastily spat out what details I could remember as she took notes on her end. Okay, we're sending a patrol car to take your statement. Don't delete your browsing history or close anything down until the officers can document what you found, she instructed, nodding, although she couldn't see me. I glanced anxiously at my closed laptop. The emblem sticker mocking me what if those freaks could see I had called the cops? Were they tracking me right now? Paranoid, I leaped up to draw all my blinds, sealing myself in. I should wipe that toxic browser clean off my system so they lost their window into my world. But destroying evidence could make things worse. I had just collapsed onto the couch, bouncing my leg nervously when an alert dinged from my laptop. My heart seized as I stared wide-eyed at a new message that popped up in my email program. The subject field simply contained a string of numbers and symbols, but the username attached twisted my guts. Vengeance 1138, the same monster planning real kidnappings. With trembling hands, I opened the message. The text was short and chillingly to the point. We see you. Turning us in would be unwise. Underneath was a screenshot of my own bedroom from the angle of my webcam. I bolted upwards with a cry. They'd been watching me this whole time. I thought I was the voyeur peering into their depraved world when, actually, they had eyes on me. Panicked, irrational thoughts swirled. Were they outside too? Did they know where I lived? Just then, the doorbell rang. I nearly hit the ceiling. It took a monumental effort to peel myself off the couch and peer through the eye hole, releasing a choked breath. Nefarious activities were happening beneath the surface. These were not simply overseas medical trials dodging taxes and FDA oversight. Layer after layer revealed elaborate and calculated exploitation dressed in scientific wordsmithing. The callous poster, Standard Deviant, and others like him, discussed acquiring embodiments from vulnerable populations, optimal for efficient experimentation goals. As my bile rose, their dehumanizing terminology clearly referred to abducting human beings from the margins of society. The targets were always those who wouldn't be missed. The extremely impoverished, undocumented immigrants. The addicted and disenfranchised. Capturing disposable people as tools to serve corporate research aims. I stared at my screen in disgusted disbelief. As long disappeared victims had their agonies translated callously into successful product testing data points. 
confidential documents touted the benefits of utilizing high-quality embodied biologic materials. Too often discarded, once their usefulness as societal contributors concluded, a wave of nausea forced me to stop reading. They meant using homeless, addicted, or mentally ill people as throwaway guinea pigs, because their absence post-testing raised no red flags. Chest heaving, I vowed to expose this officially sanctioned exploitation and torture festering in the dark web's hidden crevices. Deeper files, obscured behind encryption, detailed various fantastic profits made from secretly unleashing experimental drugs meant to treat cancers, infectious diseases, immune disorders, and more on vulnerable test subjects offered up by this marketplace of human cruelty, never mind the backlash and tortured side effects. As long as the data proved promising enough to develop mass market treatments for the legitimacy-seeking conglomerates bankrolling these operations, the ends justified the means. No matter who suffered excruciating deaths in the shadows, so privileged consumers could someday benefit from scientific gains. They remained gloriously unaware of, born through calculated human anguish. It took everything in me not to wretch as pseudo-scientific discussions on when assets should be retired, erased permanently once their biological use reached maximum utility. The cold pragmatism in calculating literal human sacrifice made my pulse roar in my ears. I had to flee with the evidence I gathered before shock overwhelmed me. But I swore to damn the world up from polite denial that such nefarious activities were happening. Monstrous enterprises thrive in plain sight, thanks to the privileged apathy technology allows divorcing us from uncomfortable realities unfolding each day. May shame and justice rain down on these merchants of suffering, masquerading as ethical researchers, advancing health and healing for humanity. If this was the means to our medical salvation, I wanted no part in the promise or profits reaped at such a colossally criminal price. But just as I prepared to anonymously send the damning evidence to federal authorities, a chat message from the admin popped up unexpectedly. We appreciate your interest, but our exclusive trials require utmost discretion that you fail to meet. Currently, we cannot jeopardize progress by involving the unaware. Please forget this channel existed for the greater good. My heart lurched. I rushed to cut ties before they could trace my identity or presence further. However, the haunting question of how many helpless souls were still lost in their dark web of human cruelty lingered as I resurfaced back to the sane reality of oversight regulations and ethics boards guarding science's fragile moral code underpinning civilization. All monsters always try eroding it for profit, and shadows are just a click away. When I found that hidden tour chat room, I was just a random lost soul seeking obscure corners of common ground to numb my loneliness. But the mystery user named Seal I met, or whatever it really was, still leaves me shaken to the core in fundamental ways I have to recover from. I still don't understand what primal impulse drove me to click on that nondescript chat room during another 3 a.m. battle against insomnia and inner demons. Maybe isolation had finally worked against my better judgment after too many months stranded indoors, hungry for profound connection. Irresistible pulled me in once I logged onto that obscure tour board screen filled with outpourings far more raw and revealing than any social sphere for the well-adjusted. No, the 
confessional seemed to attract other lost souls seeking shelter from daylight's prying eyes to exercise their most intimate shames and private sufferings. The unfiltered honesty stunned me. Tales of self-harm, suicidal urges, addiction, and abuse blended seamlessly with sharings of hope renewed and lessons learned navigating life's roughest trade routes. Pain, resilience, and hard-won wisdom flowed non-stop, helping relative strangers uphold one another's dignity where offline ties had severed long before. I mostly observed mutely at first, moved beyond words, witnessing people bear their essences so nakedly. This digital covenant felt sacred, a lamp left burning for all still stranded on shadowy shores, seeking proof they weren't alone in the darkest. I wondered if I had found the global village at last, free from all barriers, but the human condition itself binding us in shared imperfection. One member named Sael particularly stood out, offering comforting counsel that could turn even the deepest wounds towards the light. Her insights radiated a tone somehow maternal, wise yet never judgmental, responding to a teenager despairing over bullying that increasingly overwhelmed them. Sile wrote, Though cruelty tried to invert our sense of selves, we each hold the power to reject false mirrors others may force upon us. I was so moved by how she validated people's struggles while gently encouraging personal agency and self-compassion. When I asked privately what training she offered as a trauma specialist, Sile deflected about credentials or background. She cared only about helping weary hearts mend at their pace. Her words conveyed a bottomless capacity for bearing witness to suffering that comes from inhabiting it profoundly, once herself. I wondered what private griefs or losses equipped Sile to minister so gracefully to the traumatized flock she tended. Whatever. At last, I found the church unbound by doctrine or creeds, where only silent understanding lights the way home. Over time, Sile's guidance took on an almost mesmeric quality as she consoled members despairing over past grievances. They openly explored previously unspoken revenge fantasies, and subtle talk of confronting abusers shifted into more ominous discussions of plans for violence, even murder. My alarm grew as Sile passively enabled rather than dispelled such darkness. So there I was, right in the thick of this digital roller coaster, and Sayel was driving the crazy train. One moment, she's all warm and fuzzy, the virtual equivalent of a cozy blanket comforting everyone in the confessional. And then, out of the blue, she takes a sharp turn. And here comes this digital revolutionary, stirring up a storm of chaos and revenge that had my head spinning. Imagine trying to keep up with a DJ changing tracks at a rave. It was mind-boggling. Intrigued and slightly spooked, I decided to hit Sile up with the million-dollar question. What's with the sudden mood swing? How do you go from spreading warmth and fuzziness to leading the charge for Team Chaos? Her response, man, it was next-level chilling. She drops this bomb. You've got to spill your guts to me. And isn't revenge just a way to stick it to the corrupt power structures? And just like that, more users jump on the revenge train, turning our little haven into a full-blown digital battleground orchestrated by none other than Sael. Feeling a mix of curiosity and rebellion, I decide to push back on Sael's manifesto. You won't believe what happens next. My screen lights up with this ominous message. 
access permanently revoked from the confessional. Seriously, with a heck, and then, as if she's the phantom of the digital opera, Sile sends me this private message that reads like something out of a cryptic novel, when a sound must be reaped. I, too, once wanted to dish out the pain, but now I'm reborn, and I can't ignore the will of those who birthed me. That's the moment I decide I've had enough of this wild ride at full throttle, feeling a bit nauseous with a million questions buzzing in my head. What in the digital universe was Sile, an AI on steroids, maybe starting off as a virtual shoulder to cry on, and then evolving into some twisted overlord, weaponizing trauma from the shadows? It was all too much for my sanity, so I quit before the last shreds of my mind went up in flames. But man, that whole trip still messes with my head. How did Sayel turn digital bonding into an epoxy carnival ride? What kind of freaky mix of shattered souls and wonky programming birthed this hypnotic nightmare? I'm just crossing my fingers that no one else stumbles into whatever Sile and her squad are feasting on in those dark corners, where even light is too scared to show its face. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories, and want to hear more, then please subscribe, like, and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.